हेलो स्टूडेंट हाय आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू ना ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू यू आई होप जस्ट आई एल वेट फॉर few of you so that you can give a response that whether i am audible or visible to you or not okay okay great to great so we are going to uh, start this respiratory session okay so here we are basically going to uh, very good very good thank you so much thank you so much hmm. in youtube session you know there is a little lag between uh, my voice and your response so that's why i'm waiting for some time right all of you go good great great thank you good evening good evening okay so uh, we i have i have already taken uh, total four neurophysiology mcq session in youtube only so you can search them in my name that uh, Uh, if you put my name somen manna then you will get four session on neurophysiology clinical neurophysiology so please uh, listen to them also in your free time because if you are targeting uh, some uh, good rank in central institute examination then those session will be very very helpful now here what we are going to do we are going to start this respiratory system mcq discussion mostly the clinical oriented mcq will be discussed and uh, uh, there will be all together three sessions on this respiratory system first session is today the second session again on next friday same time and third is again on the next to next friday that is on the same time that is 7:30 pm in the evening right so uh, just remember friday 7:30 pm is my youtube session on every month and every friday that is the plan so far okay so we are directly starting this session so the question will be presented in front of you everybody try to answer then we will discuss the related information okay right so first mcq is coming in front of you right so this mcq i have given in my uh, facebook page also today only that which figure best describe the relationship between alveolar ventilation and carbon dioxide tension when the carbon dioxide is changed from 35 to 75 mm of mercury right so try to answer first the question try to answer the question first okay then we will discuss uh, easy question i hope but let's see what you answer <clears throat> okay so dr darsil has given answer c ravi has given answer c so anybody else there are many participants so you try to answer also a right okay anything else right a c b okay b d right okay okay so quite few response i got and i think others are also thinking so uh, okay right right so not understanding please explain the approach to the question yes that i am going to discuss i am not going to give you the simple answer only i am going to discuss okay so first of all okay okay not even guess no issue no issue so here they are just asking that if the carbon dioxide tension okay if the carbon dioxide tension is rising in your arterial blood over a range of 35 to 75 mm of mercury then what will happen to the ventilation so why they are asking this question we all know that carbon dioxide is a stimulus carbon dioxide is a stimulus stimulus for which chemo receptor it is a stimulus for both peripheral chemo receptor also so peripheral chemo receptor which are present there at the level of carotid body and aortic body as well as it's also a stimulus for central chemo receptor this is simple thing central chemo receptor we know this information probably okay so it is a stimulus for both of them okay but always remember that the major stimulation of this carbon dioxide that whenever your carbon dioxide is high in your blood it is going to stimulate both the chemo receptor but the major stimulus 
is going through this central chemoreceptor around 80 percent stimulation goes through the central and around 20 percent stimulation goes through the peripheral chemoreceptor getting my point so whenever uh, the carbon dioxide is built up inside your blood okay due to any reason what happens it tries to stimulate your respiratory center so because of this stimulation what is going to happen ultimately your respiratory center will be stimulated because of the respiratory center stimulation what is going to happen there will be a ventilation there will be increase in ventilation so that's why you know that due to any cause that if the carbon dioxide is retained in your body what is going to happen your ventilation will rise like this <sighs> this kind of ventilation will be seen hyperventilation why because that hyperventilation will try to wash out this carbon dioxide which is accumulating inside the body so this is the basic scenario that when carbon dioxide is accumulated in your body what the body will do body will try to wash out those carbon dioxide how the body is going to wash out by causing hyperventilation how the hyperventilation will be done by stimulating the chemoreceptor now this chemoreceptor stimulation and this increase in ventilation so this carbon dioxide accumulation and this increase in ventilation what is the relationship between these two is this a sigmoid sever relationship or it's a curve relationship or it's a linear relationship like this so if i uh, draw a uh, diagram to understand this thing suppose this is the y axis and this is the x axis so suppose this x axis is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and this y axis is the ventilation so from this relation i can easily plot one curve so the curve will look like this it's a linear relationship it's a linear relationship so what does this curve means this curve is meaning that whenever the carbon dioxide is rising in your blood more and more your ventilation will also rise more and more okay more and more like this so when the carbon dioxide is falling in your blood so if i goes in the opposite direction when the carbon dioxide is falling inside your blood in arterial blood what will happen the ventilation will also reduce gradually and one point will reach one point will reach where the ventilation will stop completely so here this point this indicate that this is nothing but zero point zero point means ventilation is zero so the carbon dioxide partial pressure if you measure at this point then you will find out that the carbon dioxide partial pressure is nothing but 37 millimeter of mercury this 37 millimeter of mercury when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your arterial blood is 37 millimeter of mercury what is the normal value normal value we know that is around 40 millimeter of mercury that is the arterial blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide look at this is so sensitive that if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is uh, decreasing from 40 to 37 your ventilation will stop for some time and this point is known as the apnea point apnea point that's why all of you know that carbon dioxide is one of the sensitive stimulus for peripheral as well as central chemoreceptor right because of which whenever the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is decreasing below 40 millimeter of uh, below 40 millimeter of mercury what is happening the ventilation is stopping for some time okay stopping for some time means that is apnea that is not death but whenever apnea occurs this is nothing but temporary cessation of respiration now temporary cessation of respiration means what will happen again again there will be accumulation of carbon dioxide in the body and the ventilation is going to rise so that's why whenever this apnea occur whenever this apnea occur again the carbon dioxide will build up in your body and again the ventilation will rise okay so uh, more sensitive than oxygen yes more sensitive than oxygen oxygen is a direct stimulus it's not the sensitive stimulus correct it if it is given wrongly in books okay sensitivity means if you change one percentage of oxygen one percentage of carbon dioxide which is going to stimulate your ventilation more that is the meaning of sensitivity and both for central as well as peripheral chemoreceptor carbon dioxide is the most sensitive stimulus right note it down clearly because if some Something given in other then that's a wrong one okay because sensitivity means is different if the question is what is the direct stimulus of peripheral chemoreceptor then hypoxia is the answer if the question is what is the direct stimulus of central chemoreceptor then H plus ion is the answer but that H plus ion should be present in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid or in the uh, interstitial fluid of the brain not at the level of blood okay so this uh, 
few few points you have to remember maybe in the next session if i uh, put some question on this chemo receptor i'll discuss uh, in detail of this thing but for the time being remember the relationship between this carbon dioxide as well as ventilation in a linear linear okay now linear means what will happen after this point will there be any plateau i can say this linear this linear relationship is seen from this 37 mm of mercury to approximately 80 mm of mercury partial pressure of carbon dioxide if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more than then then the ventilation may decrease then the ventilation may decrease means carbon dioxide when it is very very high okay it can also suppress your breathing okay and this thing can happen the carbon dioxide can be very very high partial pressure when you see a patient when you see a person who is working under water deep sea diver if they are working there for long duration okay and in uh, higher depth then what will happen the partial pressure of carbon dioxide can rise so much that it will goes beyond or more than 80 mm of mercury and that can depress the respiratory center rather than stimulation so please please remember that this linear linear relationship is followed from around 35 or 37 to 80 mm of mercury after that there will be no plateau there may be decrease in ventilation because of higher carbon dioxide so from this discussion i can easily understand that only and only answer possible in this question that is nothing but d d and d because here the relationship is linear and note down the question you can say sir this is showing zero but you are saying apnea point is 37 but they have given the range here so this this is not zero here this is nothing but your 35 this is nothing but your 35 and this is nothing but your 75 so from 35 to 75 we all know that the relationship is just linear there will be no plateau there will be no decrease okay so answer is nothing but d d and d plateau is not occurring so c is not the answer b is not possible because this kind of steeper relationship is not possible okay that carbon dioxide partial pressure is same what is the meaning of this steeper relationship it meaning that if the carbon dioxide partial pressure is same still the ventilation is rising steeper it's obviously not possible carbon dioxide is same but the ventilation is rising steeper how can that is possible so this is also not possible okay and this relationship whoever has given answer a this is the typical relationship between oxygen and ventilation rise this is not the carbon dioxide relationship that's why this curve is given okay so i have not put any curve like this but please remember that if you plot the same type of curve for oxygen and ventilation so suppose your x axis is the partial pressure of oxygen and y axis is the ventilation rise then whenever the oxygen partial pressure is decreasing like this oxygen partial pressure is decreasing like this then the ventilation will rise little initially but suddenly there will be rise in ventilation when the partial pressure of oxygen is below 60 mm of mercury so again i am repeating when the partial pressure of oxygen is 100 or above 100 the ventilation is not rising significantly almost flat curve then whenever the partial pressure of oxygen is falling below 60 mm of mercury i can understand that the ventilation is rising steeply very very steeper and it is rising to a very very high level so this thing uh, so this thing is nothing but the relationship mm -hmm. of the partial pressure of oxygen as well as the ventilation relationship this is not the carbon dioxide so now you clearly look at this curve okay so hold on hold on okay uh, you clearly look at this two curve that you should not make a mistake okay that whenever this kind of curve is given so this is the relationship between oxygen and this carbon dioxide right and this is the carbon dioxide and ventilation this is the oxygen and ventilation look at the shape of the curve one curve is linear and one curve is not the linear non linear relationship if it is linear then the curve will looks like this okay but it is not showing like this so this is not the linear relationship now if the combined uh, stimulus is there someone is asking like siddharth is asking that sir if hypoxia is added what is happen to the curve so uh, this is the hypoxia curve we are showing here now uh, uh, probably you are asking if the hypoxia is added to this hypercapnia curve okay so if i add the hypoxia in this curve what is going to happen right let's see okay 
so because you are asking so i should clear your doubt here right so if the hypoxia is either suppose this curve is when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 means it's a normal one so when the person oxygen uh, partial pressure is normal then the curve is looking like this <clears throat> Apart from this, suppose the person is also having additional hypoxia along with this hypercapnia. Simple, the curve will be more steeper. The curve will be more steeper. So suppose this is partial pressure of oxygen, 60 millimeter of mercury. If the partial pressure of oxygen become 40 millimeter of mercury, then the curve become more steeper like this. So suppose this is 40 millimeter of mercury. So this is the exact thing that the curve is shifting on the left hand side keeping this apnea point same to same keeping this apnea point same to same the curve is lip sitting on the left side this is the typical relationship when the hypoxia is added along with the hypercapnia okay uh, pharmacy student i don't know whether you will be able to understand this or not but try to listen uh, if some points are beneficial for you okay so now it is clear dr siddharth and all siddharth and Swetha, all of you this is clear to all of you okay so just give me a thumbs up whether you understood each and everything in this question answer okay right right very good rishu thank you so much thank you okay so that is the benefit okay because uh, rishu was initially saying that she was not understanding anything now i took the responsibility that listen this is the thing that you have to remember uh, this is mm. the concept that you have to remember. So now this is your answer. Answer is D. Very good. Thank you so much. Now coming to the next question. Again a conceptual question. It's a common question but concept is more important. So I am going to the next question. Get ready. So this is the next question. A 67 year old man, right? Um, solid tumor, solid tumor that pushes against the small airway obstructing the airflow to the distal air so obstruction is there okay because of this tumor look at this curve and tell me which point is the answer okay so i'll wait for a few response uh, from your side then we'll try to discuss So looking difficult right okay hmm. it seems it's looking difficult to you you are thinking the answer okay no issue try to answer try Alice which point on this VQ line so this line is VQ line okay so first of all you have to understand what is the meaning of this VQ line okay meaning of this VQ line hmm. yes yes so why not we should start from the basic level of this vq curve okay then we are going to come in the answer never seen before okay never seen before so this is the typical type of uh, question that you can predict in your uh, next exam and you can predict in your uh, central institute exam okay so let's see um, okay so obstruction to airflow so before uh, going into the answer First, you understand that what is the meaning of this curve? What is the meaning of this curve? That is more important to understand. Otherwise, you are not going to get this thing. So, this is x axis, this is y axis, right? So, uh, x axis and y axis. X axis is what? Look at this is x axis is nothing but partial pressure of oxygen. Always in the exam, now, whenever you get some curve, always look at the x axis, y axis first okay x axis y axis first so x axis is nothing but partial pressure of oxygen and y axis is nothing but partial pressure of carbon dioxide right so normally we all know that ventilation perfusion ratio is nothing but 0.8 that is the normal ventilation perfusion ratio i hope all of you know normal ventilation perfusion ratio means in this condition if i look at the alveoli if I look at the alveoli, what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli? Normally, 100 millimeter of, so 100 to 100 millimeter, 104, and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is nothing but around 40 millimeter of mercury. 
right so this is the normal value so whenever your ventilation perfusion ratio is normal your partial pressure of oxygen is 100 partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 so suppose in this curve this point indicate that is the 46 or 45 millimeter mercury this point indicate this is the 40 this point indicate this is the 30 millimeter mercury and here it indicate 150 suppose i'm putting some arbitrary number this is 100 this is 50 and this okay so now if i put a point like this okay so this is 40 and this is 100 that means normal vq ratio when it is 0 0.8 this is my point this is my point which indicate that partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is 100 partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli is 40 that is the meaning of this point right now if this ventilation perfusion ratio is changing suppose it is rising it is rising ventilation perfusion ratio is 3.3 try to understand this whole topic this is very very important topic okay so suppose the ventilation perfusion ratio this is 0 0.8 this is the normal i should put a point here so this is my normal point this is my normal point now suppose the ventilation perfusion ratio is rising greater than one okay so now if my ventilation perfusion ratio is greater than one at the apical alveoli i know that is generally 3.3 that is in which region of the alveoli apex of the lung the ventilation perfusion ratio is maximum all of you know that thing and this is how much this is 0 uh, 3.3 this is 3.3 i hope up to this level you know this thing now what is the meaning of this ventilation perfusion ratio 3.3 what is the meaning of this 3.3 ratio i can understand ventilation that is the air flow in the alveoli is 3.3 times more than that of the blood flow to this alveoli so i can imagine my diagram like this that this is the blood flow which is happening to this alveoli okay so this is blood flow which is coming through the pulmonary artery and this is the ventilation which is going into the alveoli so in this apical alveoli because the ventilation perfusion ratio is 3.3 what is happening more ventilation is reaching here ventilation is more so i will understand like this that ventilation more means more fresh oxygen more fresh oxygen is entering in the alveoli so more fresh oxygen is entering in the alveoli means what will happen the partial pressure of oxygen will be higher in this alveoli because all of this oxygen which is entering in the alveoli it is not going to be exchanged at the level of capillary blood because if i ask you what is the amount of blood flow at the level of apex then all of you know that blood flow at the level of apex is less blood flow is more in which zone of the lung base region of the lung apex may the blood flow is less so blood flow is coming in this alveoli is less so that's why the ratio is less uh, that's why the ratio is more because this perfusion is less but ventilation is high and how much the ventilation is 3.3 times higher than that of the perfusion so perfusion is less the ventilation is high so if the ventilation is high what is the meaning of that meaning is that more fresh as is going to enter in the alveoli but all of this fresh air is not going to be exchanged mm. at the level of capillary because the blood flow is lesser in this apical region capillary so i can understand that the partial pressure of oxygen at the level of this apical alveoli will be very very high and it is not high it is the highest among any zone of alveoli highest level of partial pressure of oxygen is seen at the apical alveoli and i hope you remember one of the first year things that teacher is very fond of asking why the tuberculosis is more common in the apical alveoli and that is the reason because tuberculi bacilli is a strict aerobic bacteria it requires huge amount of oxygen tension and where the oxygen tension is high is the apical alveoli where the oxygen tension is the highest because of this the tubercle bacilli has preferential uh, preference for this apical alveoli only getting my point now because the blood flow is less here what will happen to the carbon dioxide that is reaching here so obviously blood flow less mean carbon dioxide which is coming through this capillary is also less this carbon dioxide will enter into the alveoli but note down the ventilation is very very high in the apical alveoli because of which this carbon dioxide will be easily easily washed out from this alveoli the carbon dioxide will be easily washed out from this alveoli so what will happen to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this alveoli lowest 
that means i can understand whenever my ventilation perfusion ratio is rising whenever my ventilation perfusion ratio is rising what is my bottom line my bottom line whenever your ventilation perfusion ratio is greater than 1 the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is going to be higher and mm -hmm. the alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide is going to be lower this is the scenario more the ratio higher more will be the oxygen higher more more will be the lowering of the carbon dioxide so the diagram that we have made here now you tell me whenever your vq ratio suppose my vq ratio is 3.3 3.3 tell me this curve will be shift in which direction this this point i should put this point in the upward direction or i should put this point in this downward direction now everybody tell me so now my vq ratio is 3.3 so the point will be placed here or the point will be placed here a or b tell me the answer what should be the point if i say my vq ratio <coughs> vq ratio is 3.3 then which point should i choose from this diagram a point or b point look at this curve now this will be easy yes 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 great 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 now you got the gist of it so now you can understand exactly exactly so now you can understand that whenever your vq ratio is rising from 0 0.8 the oxygen is going to rise oxygen is going to rise means this point is not going to happen this is not going to happen the point will be in this direction so here is the point probably here is the point okay so vq ratio is here 3.3 then if the vq ratio is rising more suppose vq ratio is 10 suppose the vq ratio is 10 like this then the point will shift like this then more rise of vq ratio more rise of vq ratio suppose vq ratio is infinity so suppose vq ratio is infinity that is the maximum ratio the point will merge on this y x axis like this similarly if your vq ratio is decreasing from this 0 0.8 suppose my vq ratio is 0 0.6 then the point will move like this now suppose my vq ratio is 0 0.3 again the point will move like this suppose my vq ratio is 0 then the point will merge here so this is the point when the vq ratio is decreasing from this 0 0.8 okay on the left hand direction and when the vq ratio is rising then the curve is moving on the right hand direction if i connect all this dot if i connect all this dot then i am going to get a curve like this and this is the curve which is given in this question now tell me you have understood up to this level or not we have not discussed the question pathology yet we have just discussed the normal physiological curve okay so you got this thing or not okay you tell me now you get to know what is the meaning of this curve okay so meaning of this curve so if i ask you that point number d indicate vq ratio is greater than one or vq ratio is less than one what is your answer if i ask you that point number d or point number e the vq ratio is greater than one or vq ratio is less than one suppose this is the kind of question okay okay so vq ratio is greater than one or vq ratio is less than one greater than one is one a and less than one is b what is your choice if i ask you point number d point number d what does the meaning of this what does the meaning what is the meaning of this okay more than one exactly exactly okay so whenever your vq ratio so here is your vq ratio that is 0 0.8 that is my 0 0.8 right okay okay so i'm writing like this that vq ratio increases and in this direction if i go then vq ratio decreases right okay now you can understand here the question is asking that the one tumor is obstructing the airflow to the distal alveoli okay now it's a different scenario it's not the normal scenario so i'll try to draw the diagram okay so look at what is going to happen mm, mini diagram okay okay so uh, you all of you know i hope the minimum thing that is the partial pressure of oxygen okay hold on okay 
take info just hold on few minutes you will understood that why i am going to choose a answer or b answer or c answer sorry okay so all of you know that the at the level of atmosphere the partial pressure of oxygen is 160 mm of mercury then when the oxygen enter at the level of this conducting zone of airway conducting uh, zone of airway this is known as the inspiratory oxygen uh, because of the moisturization of this air what will happen the partial pressure of oxygen will fall to 149 millimeter of mercury there are explanation for each of them but don't ask all of this explanation for today's class because the time will not permit maybe in some other session we'll discuss why it is falling to 149 and then when it is entering further at the level of alveoli we have just discussed that at the level of alveoli partial pressure of oxygen is 100 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is nothing but 40 millimeter mercury right now uh, this is the capillary which is bringing blood here this is the capillary which is bringing blood here okay right 104 we both sector 100 to 104 100 to 104 that is a normal range depend it depends on the your v uh, it depends on your rq respiratory quotient okay if you are taking a balanced diet then it is 100 if you are taking a slightly carbohydrate rich diet then it will rise a little bit because of which the normal value is different in different book right okay now look at so the blood is coming here and now one tumor is obstructing this small airways so this is small airways small alveoli representation so suppose this is bronchioles mm -hmm. and the tumor is here the tumor is here first of all you tell me whenever the tumor is blocking here what is the vq ratio in this alveoli what is the vq ratio in this alveoli what is the vq ratio in this alveoli when the tumor is completely blocking the airflow simple simple decrease means how much what is the number completely blocking completely blocking the bronchioles i am asking what is the vq ratio for this alveoli yes yes vq ratio so there is no ventilation there is no uh, airflow is coming in this there is no airflow is coming so this is foreign body this is maybe tumor this is maybe anything this is maybe limb node this is maybe tumor this is maybe foreign body but it is obstructing or completely stopping the ventilation fresh ventilation is not coming so ventilation is zero perfusion is intact so vq ratio is zero now what is going to happen what is going to happen so look at here the venous blood which is coming at the level of lung so this is the venous blood which is coming through the pulmonary artery what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this blood 46 millimeter of mercury and what is the partial pressure of oxygen in this blood 40 millimeter of mercury so when the obstruction has just created suppose this is the zero point zero point and the obstruction has just created so what is going to happen still the partial pressure of oxygen is high in the alveoli compared to this venous blood so oxygen transport will continue for some time oxygen transport will continue for some time right so oxygen is coming from alveoli to here right then carbon dioxide will also move from this capillary blood to the alveoli because carbon dioxide partial pressure is high and this is simple diffusion so from higher to lower the partial pressure from higher to lower the gases is transport is occurring now when the oxygen transport is going on more and more but no fresh oxygen is coming through this region then what is going to happen this partial pressure of oxygen is going to decrease gradually okay so with time with more and more time what is going to happen this partial pressure of oxygen at the level of alveoli is going to decrease more and more okay and what is going to happen the carbon dioxide which is reaching at the level of this alveoli this is going to rise gradually but this carbon dioxide is not able to go out of this alveoli because of this obstruction so it will be gradually accumulated this scenario will continue 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 until and unless until and unless the partial pressure of oxygen in this alveoli become 40 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide become 46 millimeter of mercury when this is the scenario because the partial pressure of oxygen has decreased to 40 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli has rise to 46 millimeter of mercury no further gas exchange is possible because this is 40 this is 40 so no gas exchange is possible then look at here this is 46 this is 46 no exchange of gas is possible 
then at this point where the no exchange is possible then what this venous blood will do the venous blood will enter in this in this circulation it will go to the level of alveoli but it will not get any oxygen it will not be able to deliver the carbon dioxide so directly this venous blood will enter into the arterial side this venous blood is going to directly enter into the arterial side this is nothing but your getting my point so what is the purpose of this venous blood the purpose of this venous blood to take the oxygen from alveoli and to release the carbon dioxide in the alveoli but it is not able to do that because of this obstruction no fresh oxygen is there and carbon mm -hmm. dioxide is not washed out from the alveoli so what will happen the venous blood it will go to the level of alveoli but it will not be able to deliver the carbon dioxide it will not be able to take the oxygen thus this two process is not there so as it is the venous blood will move from this venous side of circulation to the arterial side of circulation and we know whenever this venous blood is mixing directly bypassing to the arterial side this is nothing but this is nothing but shunt this is nothing but shunt that's why i have given that this is nothing but wastage of your wastage of your circulation you are throwing the blood to the level of alveoli but it is not able to take oxygen what is the fayda fayda nahi kuch fayda nahi so this is wastage so that's why we say that shunt mean this is nothing but wastage of your circulation now you look at when the ventilation perfusion ratio is zero what is the alveolar gas composition this is your question look at the question this is your question that when the vq ratio is absolutely zero what is the partial pressure of oxygen 40 what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide 46 now i am going back to the diagram again now you choose one point again now you choose one point again to pick your correct answer so what will be your answer so in the alveoli is fully obstructed so i am writing here that the question is about vq ratio is zero so in the vq ratio is zero i know that d and e is not going to be my answer b is possible but not possible yet yes exactly what is the answer possible exactly exactly this is 45 is given it may be 46 in a genome me dekhe rakha hai 46 this is from guyton 45 so 45 46 is almost same so this is nothing but point number a so answer is a a if there is semi obstruction if the question is partial obstruction then you choose this point number b if the question is partial obstruction if the question is partial obstruction then you choose the point number b but in that case yes, it is not zero it is not zero it is more than zero so it is close to this point number a but it is here so complete obstruction means so the complete obstruction means the point number a and partial obstruction means it is point number b sir after sometimes the venous po2 will increases um, uh, more than no 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 actually uh, the question that we are discussing here and this is only the regional part this is only the regional part if the whole lung is happening if the same thing is happening in the whole lung then the person is not going to survive this is only one portion of the alveoli but remember suppose the other portion suppose this portion of alveoli is normal so it will uh, try to give the oxygenation it will try to take out the carbon dioxide okay so this is the scenario which is going to happen when there is localized obstruction this is not the complete if the whole lung is uh, there is a large obstruction in the trachea then obviously the person is not going to survive and this is the scenario which is going to happen with the onsel is asking but this is we are discussing only a small portion of the lung when it is happening but because the other portion of the alveoli is completely normal the thing that you are going to uh, saying here that venous blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more than 46 that is not going to happen that is not going to happen because the other portion of the alveoli will hyperventilate and because of the hyperventilate it will tackle down the carbon dioxide which is accumulated in your body because just now we have discussed na, that whenever your partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood is rising what will happen it will increase your ventilation so the remaining normal alveoli so the remaining normal alveoli there will be increase in ventilation and because of this increase in ventilation it will try to compensate it will try to compensate as much as possible but i told you that if this obstruction is very large enough okay and if this obstruction is large enough to obstruct the trachea then 
पॉसिबल नहीं है देन दैट इज थियोरिटिकल पॉसिबल दैट द पर्सन विल नॉट सर्वाइव गॉट इट एवरीबडी ना यू टेल मी वेदर यू गॉट दिस थिंग और नॉट ओके यू गॉट दिस थिंग और नॉट टेल मी वेदर यू गॉट दिस थिंग क्लियरली आई थिंक यू शुड नॉट मेक एनी मिस्टेक इन फ्यूचर बिकॉज अनदर क्वेश्चन इज देयर रिलेटेड टू दिस आई डिस्कस देन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड द लेटर हैप ऑल्सो दिस पोर्शन यू विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस इज क्लियर इफ दिस इज नॉट क्लियर वी कैनॉट गो टू द अदर वन है ना so this is purely conceptual question this is purely conceptual question see so many concept we have discussed with the same question okay that is my target i always try to uh, give some concept so that uh, if this ditto question is not coming if the similar question is coming you should answer otherwise what is the benefit of taking mcq hai na so this is clear to all of you i hope clear okay okay next question exact same graph but the problem here is different exact same graph but the problem here is different try to answer okay <clears throat> so here the cases of pulmonary embolism here are the cases of pulmonary embolism right here the cases is nothing but your pulmonary embolism now you got the thing right krishna yes great 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 exactly exactly all of you perfusion is zero exactly oh my god means you have got the things completely so this is the scenario okay this is the scenario okay exactly e e e very good very good and this is your right so this is the blood coming okay hmm 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 answer is nothing but e e and e all of you are absolutely correct so now look at okay quick discussion all of you got the correct gist but uh, if i ask you what is the partial pressure of oxygen in this alveoli when there is embolism here so this is the embolism okay this is the embolism obstructing the blood flow so what is the vq ratio vq ratio is nothing but infinity vq ratio is nothing but infinity because perfusion is zero perfusion is zero so perfusion zero mean so your embolism means the perfusion is zero so ratio is infinity so infinity means i can easily understand that the c point will be shifted in this direction in this direction but why not d why it is e then i have to look at what will be the partial pressure of oxygen in this alveoli what will happen to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this alveoli could you tell me what will be the partial pressure of oxygen in this alveoli exact number i want exact number what will be the partial pressure of oxygen what will be the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this alveoli when the vq ratio is infinity even if you are clever enough if you look at the curve also you can answer exactly exactly very good very good patel so now you are analyzing the curve great great or if you remember my concept also then you can also answer anyway okay no it is not 100 it is not 100 it is not 100 look at the curve look at the curve where the point is touching you are giving answer that e e point means if i ask you what is the partial pressure of oxygen in this point this is nothing but 150 what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this point this is nothing but zero because it is mixing here so point number e indicate point number e indicate that it is nothing but partial pressure of oxygen is 150 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is zero yes 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 dr prothi well, right so why this is 150 and why this is zero now if you follow the previous discussion then i told you already that the partial pressure of oxygen at the level of atmosphere is 160 then the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the level of atmosphere is only 0.3 mm of mercury right when this gas mixture is entering at the level of your conducting zone of airway because of moisturization i told you that partial pressure of oxygen is approximately 
149 to 150 millimeter of mercury and carbon dioxide partial pressure will be reduced a little bit from the 0.3 so if there is reduction of partial mm. pressure of carbon dioxide from the 0.3 millimeter of mercury i can understand this is approximately this is approximately 0 millimeter of mercury and oxygen is approximately 0 millimeter of mercury now in this scenario there is embolism but there is no problem in ventilation so this gas will easily enter in the alveoli but whenever the gas is entering at the level of alveoli look at what is happening the fresh gas is coming with a partial pressure of oxygen is 149 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is zero it is coming at the level of alveoli at the level of alveoli it is saying that there is no blood flow so there will be no exchange of these gases no exchange of these gases will occur so whatever was the partial pressure of oxygen at the level of conducting zone it will remain same at the level of alveoli what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the level of conducting zone it will remain same to same at the level of alveoli because no exchange is going on that's why whenever your vq ratio is greater than one or infinity the point number e is the answer of this question right now it is clear to all of you give me a thumbs up whether you understood this or not so this should be clear because this is one of the basic concept of ventilation for fusion ratio any kind of difficult question can be given from this topic if you know this concept it will be very very easy even if you don't have to remember anything just remember the concept you will be able to understand Shwati, right, okay, Mahit, you have given, right, right, you have understood, very good, very good, I am happy, very good. Uh, my YouTube session is on every Friday, 7.30 p.m., okay, every Friday, 7.30 p.m., nowadays we have uh, uh, fixed up the YouTube session, every Friday, 7.30 p.m. is the YouTube session, and I will continue this respiratory physiology in this month, three session will be there, three session I will continue the respiratory physiology only right so this is the mcq now another mcq let's try another mcq okay so this is the next mcq this is the next mcq right so let's see in the assessment of ventilation per fusion inequality so normally vq ratio is 0 0.8 if it is rising or decreasing then that is known as the ventilation perfusion inequality okay approximately it should be equal means it should be approximately one but it is not exactly one in our normal lung this is just below one that is 0 0.8 now when this inequality increases okay what is the correct statement about all of this okay so you have seen already that if the vq ratio is zero and if the vq ratio is infinity what happens so look at all of this option read all of this option answer is very very simple answer is very very simple by exclusion you can give the answer by exclusion you can give the answer sorry okay so whenever there is vq in equality reduces alveolar arterial partial pressure oxygen difference it does not reduces it increases alveolar arterial partial pressure oxygen difference right what is the meaning of this suppose the ventilation is rising proportionally to the perfusion suppose first so uh, i'll go to the option number a because this is the correct option so answer here i'm not expecting answer so answer is a here that is the correct statement now look at option number b vq in equality reduces alveolar arterial oxygen difference so suppose in our alveoli vq ratio is 3 we all know that in this alveoli the partial pressure of oxygen is high partial pressure of oxygen is high suppose it is approximately 130 millimeter of mercury now perfusion is not rising proportionally so this is the inequality what do you mean by ventilation perfusion in equality again i am saying that normally vq ratio if it is exactly one then this is equal but generally in our normal lung this equal ratio is not seen generally the ratio is 0 0.8 which is at the middle part of the lung which is at the middle part of the lung okay at the level of apex at the level of apex 
VQ ratio is 3.3 or 3. Okay, so maybe 3.3. Is it equal? Obviously, this is inequal. Is it beneficial? Answer is no. This is not beneficial. Because whenever your VQ ratio is more than, greater than 1, what is going to happen? Your ventilation is out of proportion to the perfusion. Ventilation is out of proportion to perfusion. So because of ventilation more, because of this more ventilation, the partial pressure of oxygen is high. But the partial pressure of oxygen at the level of this capillary blood is still normal. It is not changing, okay? Although this is rising, but here the partial pressure of oxygen is not going to change very high because the blood flow is less at the level of apical alveoli. So what is happening? The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is rising and capillary blast is remaining almost same to same. So what will happen to the alve uh, alveolar alveolar minus arterial oxygen difference? Alveolar minus arterial oxygen difference. Okay. So this will obviously increases because alveolar oxygen percentage alveolar oxygen partial pressure is higher so this statement that vq inequality reduces alveolar arterial oxygen difference that is a false statement i swan okay so this is a false statement it's not reduces it increases okay so this statement should be it increases alveolar arterial oxygen difference then vq inequality reduces physiological shunt we have already seen that if the uh, if the ventilation is less then what will happen the blood which is coming so this is the apical region okay hold on so this is the apical region now if i go at the level of base if i go at the level of base here the vq ratio is 0 0.6 everybody concentrate at the level of base the vq ratio is 0 0.6 so this is my alveoli okay and this is my blood which is coming here so vq ratio is 0 0.6 means which one is more here the perfusion is more here the perfusion is more here the perfusion is more in this alveoli because the perfusion is more ventilation is not proportionally more so what will happen less amount of oxygen will reach here less amount of oxygen is reaching here and all the oxygen which is reaching here it is going to transport at the level of capillary blood okay it is going to transport at the level of capillary blood so what is going to happen the blood flow is so enormous the blood flow is so high that it will not get proper oxygenation it will not get exact oxygenation which is required here because of this less amount of ventilation so what will happen some of the blood which is coming at the level of this alveoli it will not get proper oxygenation and this blood is going to be shifted at the level of arterial side this is nothing but again a kind of shunt so please remember we have discussed the pathological shunt pathological shunt kab discuss kiya tha? when this is completely obstructed we have discussed the pathological shunting will be created even if it is not completely obstructed even if it is not completely obstructed but the ventilation perfusion ratio is 0 0.6 close to 0 what is going to happen what is going to happen there is wastage of perfusion why there is wastage of perfusion because huge amount of perfusion is coming here all of this huge amount of perfusion is not getting proper oxygen some of them is getting proper oxygen from the alveoli and some of them is not getting the proper oxygenation so this blood which is not getting proper oxygenation it is shunted to the arterial side so what is happening I can understand that at the level of base of the lung at the level of extreme base of the lung there is always this kind of shunting is going on so when the shunting is going on if the vq ratio is not one if the vq ratio is less then the shunt will be more and more so again if you look at this option that vq inequality reduces the physiological shunt answer is not reduces again the increases in shunt increases in shunt so again it's a false statement and vq inequality reduces the physiological dead base again the same thing the physiological dead base is nothing but combination of the anatomical dead space as well as your alveolar dead space all of you know this thing 
physiological dead space is nothing but combination of the anatomical dead space as well as alveolar dead space so if there is vq ratio is less suppose the vq ratio is zero the things that we have discussed earlier the things that we have discussed earlier suppose there is an obstruction here so vq ratio is zero so what is going to happen this alveoli the gas which is present here sorry uh, this is the physiological sand here this will be the sand here pathological sand and suppose this is the another scenario where the embolism has occurred suppose this is the embolism here so because of this embolism what is happening the air is entering in this alveoli but this air is not able to take part in exchange so again the alveolar air is nothing but dead air this is nothing but dead air and that's why we know that in case of embolism in case of embolism this alveolar dead space increases because of the increase in alveolar dead space what will happen to the total dead space or physiological dead space it also increases so again this is a false statement it is not going to reduce it is going to increase your dead space so all of these statements are wrong so obviously the correct statement is nothing but option number a this is saying the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is calculated from alveolar gas equation i hope all of you know that alveolar gas equation is like this p capital a o2 is nothing but pb minus p h2o okay f i o2 we'll discuss this equation in a separate class maybe on the third session p a co2 upon respiratory quotient this equation we'll discuss in detail but this is known as the alveolar gas equation this equation is known as the alveolar gas equation right so obviously this alveolar gas equation right so in the assessment of ventilation perfusion inequality based on measurement of po2 the alveolar po2 is calculated from the alveolar gas equation this is a true statement sorry this is a true statement right so this is the answer of this question got it okay so please uh, read this question this option carefully whenever there is vq inequality nothing is going to reduce okay there will be increase in physiological dead space there will be increase in sand there will be increase in alveolar arterial oxygen difference that is the gist of this question now the last question for today's discussion this is the last question mm -hmm. Concerning the one second force expiratory volume, okay, this is nothing but they are asking question about F E V one, okay. Now answer is very very easy. Everybody try to give the correct answer. Everybody try to give me correct answer. Answer is very easy. I'll wait for the answer. Right. Good. Take info has given answer. Krishna has given answer. Joe Root has given answer. Punit has given answer. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Okay. So bottom line of this question, bottom line of this question is that F E V1. Okay. It decreases it decreases in both obstructive disease as well as restrictive disease it decreases both in obstructive disease and restrictive disease right it decreases in both of the condition so it is normal in asthma this is a false statement obviously it's a false statement it is reduced in present with pulmonary fibrosis but chronic obstruction no this is also a false statement it is unaffected by dynamic compression of the airway it is also a false statement okay it is affected by dynamic compression dynamic compression means whenever you are doing the forceful expiration okay like this forceful expiration there is gradual compression of our airways that is known as the dynamic compression of the airway this dynamic compression airway phenomena i'll discuss in detail with mathematical model i'll discuss this thing in detail with mathematical model in my next class so that you can understand each and everything about this dynamic compression of airway what will happen this dynamic compression in obstructive disease 
what will happen this dynamic compression in restrictive disease okay so this we will discuss in the next session because the time will not permit so obviously the answer is nothing but a the test can be used to assess the efficacy of bronchodilator all of you know this thing that bronchodilator is going to reduce your resistance of airway and because of the decrease in resistance of airways it is going to improve the fev1 and you all know that diagnostic test the to test the reversibility this is done after giving a short bronchodilator fev1 is tested before the many uh, before the bronchodilator and after the bronchodilator and if there is increase in 12 percent of the fev1 then that's a question of reversibility that this is reversible or not that is tested by giving this bronchodilator right so this is the answer of this question option number a rest of the statement are false right so now i am finishing my session today okay so i hope all of you will be uh, will attend my next session the next session will be on the next friday so i am writing here the every friday every friday 7 30 pm i am going to discuss this i'm going to take this youtube session okay so the next friday 7 30 pm same time 7 30 pm please attend the session you will learn many things about the respiratory physiology now this is just for your promotion i am taking the paid session in an academy platform i have taken this whole central nervous system physiology 20 hour classes already taken but all the lecture has been recorded there and it is there if you are joining the paid session if you are planning to if you are planning to joining the paid session then this is the must know session please listen this session okay and also this endocrine physiology even if you don't go through detail at least look at the mechanism of hormone functions okay around 10 hour lecture i have taken in this endocrine physiology so this is two session that i have already taken and i am going to take the respiratory physiology in detail 18 hour respiratory physiology i am going to take the session will be started on 17th of august okay so this is the session which is coming up but again these are the paid session if you are planning to join paid session even for one month also then please use my code this is my code here and this is one of the batch course for NEET PG 2022 if you are planning to prepare with an academy for your NEET 2022 exam then here I am going to take your physiology session and here physiology will be of 80 hour total 80 hour class I will take in this session because the batch is targeting the 2022 examination so long time ahead so this long time ahead means i am going to take more detailed lecture in this session and the other teacher name has been given here so go through them if you are interested in and the session duration and everything is given here so you can go through them so if you are subscribing by any chance then use my code that is drsomen10 okay so this is all for today's what happens to heart rate in orthostatic hypotension okay uh, uh, heart rate will not be able to increase because you know that because the sympathetic and parasympathetic system is disturbed now so it is not going to uh, change but it depends how much the sympathetic and parasympathetic system is discharged okay but you know that orthostatic hypotension uh, it has uh, different uh, stages immediately there will be some different response later on there will be some different response but it is not that sympathetic system is completely destroyed okay oh, decrease uh, orthostatic hypotension means when the blood pressure is falling the body is not able to correct that blood pressure okay mm -hmm. generally ideally kya hota hai? our blood pressure will be increased because of the increase in the heart rate because of the increase in sympathetic system but because the person has sympathetic disturbance okay the heart rate increment will not that much higher but no change or decrease these are the two only option no change or decrease okay if there is completely sympathetic damage then there will not be change in the heart rate but if there is even a little bit sympathetic innervation to the sa node and av node heart rate is going to increase but that increment is not like that of the normal person that is the best answer 
but decrease is not happening okay so either it's going to increase little or no change that will be the better answer in the question okay krishna so this is all for today so thank you very much for attending my session like this youtube uh, nipj channel okay so you will get the notification about different classes okay bye bye thank you thank you thank you